Hey everybody, it's Sully Man here. Uh, I'm gonna kind of switch it up on you guys here. I'm I'm, uh, I'm gonna do a tutorial on some fundamentals of art. Uh, I'm I'm gonna work with lighting today, and just kind of understanding light in general and how to light a scene. Um, I'm gonna start really simple, and uh, you know through these videos. If you have any questions, uh, just go ahead and leave a comment, and uh, we'll get to it. But uh, for now, we're just gonna kind of keep it simple. I'm not going to go over shortcuts and, and, you know, using Photoshop and the interface. You know, there's plenty of resources online for you guys to be able to uh, find some of that stuff out. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And I just want you to kind of understand some basic simple, uh, the <laughs> understand some basic principles. Um, you know, if I could talk properly. But anyways, uh, I set this up, and this is just kind of the basic principles behind lighting. Um, and you can see right here with this circle, or I like to think of it as a sphere when I'm drawing. That's the subject matter I choose. So it's a sphere. It has no light. You know, I mean, if there was no light, obviously it would just be black everywhere. But um, I'm using line and drawing, so I'm just representing that as no light. I'm going to go ahead now and think. Here's my sphere. So in my head. You know, I've already go, I have the scene kind of in mind, and I'm thinking, you know, I want to have the light hitting kind of towards the, you know, the uh, top right corner of the ball, you know, uh, but you, ha you even have to think of that light in 3D space. You know, it's not exactly to the right of the ball, it's slightly behind the ball, away from the viewer. Um, you know, it's, it's closer to the viewer than it is behind the ball, but again, it's wrapping around the form, and you have to think about that in your mind. Once you think about that in your mind, you have, and let me go ahead and create a new layer so I can write some of this stuff down and, and show you what I'm talking about. You're going to have a core shadow. We'll mark it with this orange. And this line that you see here is where the light can't hit anymore. The light is, again, when the light, you have to think of it as something physical, not this imaginary force. You can't see it, but there's rays of light bouncing everywhere, um, lighting objects and stuff. So think of it as a physical thing. Now, light will hit an object and bounce directly off of it if it's smooth, or it'll scatter up if it's a not-so-smooth surface. Uh, the sphere I chose to be a smooth surface. so. As the light hits and wraps around the form, it's going to create, again, fall off. So the light hits, and as it's going around the shape, it gets to a point where the light can't reach anymore. That's the line of the core shadow. So think of this as almost like a ring around Saturn. You know what I mean? It's, it's moving around the shape. Um, so, and it's just, this is just an easy technique to kind of start to light something. So you create that line, and when you draw the initial line, think of it wrapping around the form. You don't draw it a straight line. That wouldn't be convincing at all. So think of it wrapping around the form, and then everything behind that line wouldn't have any light. So that's your core shadow. From there, from the, the line of the core shadow, Back to the light, you're going to have an area of halftone. Um, and in screen printing, it works the same way. You have solid colors that then, if it's breaking up, turns into halftone, which is little dots. Uh, think of like pointillism. If you were to shade something, you, you know, doing pointillism, it would be just a bunch of little dots. The closer the dots are together, the darker it appears. So, again, from the core shadow line, Again, think of it like, you know, the ring of Saturn wrapping around that form. From where the light stops, moving towards the light, you're going to have this area of halftone until you get the intense part of the light where there's just no halftone at all. So that's those are your basic principles behind it. So you have your subject matter, which we chose to be a sphere. We think about the scene that it's in where the light is and you light accordingly so now you we have our light which will give us a core shadow and then from the core shadow once we have that we know heading towards the light 
is going to create half tones you know, wrapping around this object. You're going to have your half tones. Now we can also move on and add a drop shadow. So this light not only hit, hits the ball, but this ball is resting on something. And where, where this ball is, it's blocking light. So you can see where the cast shadow or drop shadow is heading in this direction because our light is kind of behind the ball off to the right. So this shadow is going to be dropped down to the left away from the light. It's running away from the light. And you're going to want to start to study and, and observe these things in life through photos or just in walking around you know, outside and just start observing things more. You're learning to see better. Um, so again, we have our sphere. We created our core shadow line where the light stops. It can no longer wrap around the ball and reach. The light can't reach at this line, the core shadow line wrapping around the form. Once we have that, we can move to the next step, which is creating our halftone or shades. Um, and we know from the line where light can't reach, which is going to be that pitch black, um, you're going to start moving towards the light by fading out. Once you've got that, we're setting the ball within its scene and, and showing that it has a drop shadow. And then, to get really dynamic with it, you think about bounce light. So remember this light, it hits surfaces and bounces. Just like it hits the ball here, it bounces up. You know, it's hitting here and bouncing this way, and hitting over here and bouncing out this way until it wraps around this form it can no longer reach. There's a core shadow line or half tones. We have our drop shadow showing that the ball is blocking light as well on the plane that this thing's resting on. It could be this, this table or plane. And it's casting a shadow. Now, this shadow will also cast light back onto the ball. This plane right here is going to, you know, light's going to hit, you know, the light that's all around lighting the scene will bounce back onto the ball. But if you notice, and I'll zoom in for this, using an eyedropper, you can see this is the white. And as we move down, it's getting darker, darker, darker. This value and this value down here are almost similar because once we have this area, anything that's within the cast shadow is not going to be as intense or bright as the actual you know, range where the light actually hits. Remember, the light's not hitting here. This is bounce light, so it's going to be diffused. It's not going to be as intense. So we're using a different value range. So right around here is about the same as over here. The light's bouncing from this darker area. It's not pitch black because there's, you know, a range um, of value around here. So it's still going to cast light. This is creating light, even in a cast shadow. Um, and it's going to bounce back up onto the sphere. And that's the general principles be behind uh, lighting something. Here's the usual outro. Remember uh, to hit like if you liked it. Sharing is caring and subscribe always helps. I uh, hope you took something out of this and uh, I look forward to doing another one for you guys. Thanks for watching.